All right, hello and welcome everyone to our weekly live Tuesday Connect. Um, my name is Dora, if you don't know me already. Um, and every week I come on live to speak to a topic that's related to um, holistic health, but also uh, because a big interest of mine is around stress. Um, so each week I will introduce perhaps a different stressor that might potentially be affecting your health, your body, um, that you may or may not be paying attention to. So each week we'll dive a little bit um, deeper into uh, the, diff uh, the various stresses that you might have in your life and yeah, talk a little bit about that. Um, so today and this week, in fact, um, we're focusing on food and a food can definitely be a stressor but it can also but food is also something that can you know be your medicine right and so when i talk about food there's generally a big interest on this topic i mean this is something we all do right we all eat um and i think more and more now people are um are paying more attention to diet and nutrition and setting um, healthier habits and lifestyle for themselves. But, you know, also because people are, t are paying more attention, there's a lot more information out there um, about diets and food and it can get confusing. Um, and so when I'm asked what my point of view is in terms of diet um, and food, I think that everyone is different. Well, no, I know that everyone is different and there's not a one size fits all approach when it comes to diet or when it comes to anything really. Because so we are really, you know, we are really so different, even identical twins you know, when they're genetically similar, they live in the similar environment, but they can still have, uh, you know, they, they will still have their own experiences. They will still, um, you know, they, they, they are still coming from their point of view and experiencing life through, through themselves, which would be different from the other twin, even, you know, as similar as they might, might be. And so when we're looking at, you know, everyone here, <laughs> there's not going to be, you know, the diet that's going to work for everybody. There's not even going to be one food that's going to work for everybody. Um, there are, uh, you know, so, so, and also there are so many different factors that also come into play when we think about the food that we eat. So it's not as simple as, oh, I eat this food, it's healthy and I'll be fine because the way you eat that food, the timing of when you eat that food, your environment, your stress levels and your mood, all of these factors come into play um, on how this food is going to interact with your body systems, how you're going to react to that food. And so it's not, you know, uh, it can get quite complex and it can really get sucked into, you know, all of the different um uh, interactions that come into play. And so, you know, there's so, so much that we can talk about on this topic. And sometimes, you know, it's even, I find it hard to even know where to begin, you know, where should I begin when we talk about food? So understanding that this is a, an endless topic, um, maybe it'd be helpful for us to just start on, uh, or focus on one aspect today. So, and also, you know, I'd love to hear your feedback uh, and if you have any questions um, or comments, you know, pop them in the comments below. Um, you can reach out to me um, and I'd be happy to talk more about um, what, you know, this area that we'll be talking about uh, in just a moment or any other areas that are related to food and to any questions that you might have. So even if you're watching the replay, you know, definitely you can ask me questions and, and comment uh, below. So today then, I want to talk a little bit about food as a stressor, okay? So, um, you know, food, like I said, food can be our medicine, but food can also be a slow poison. Um, and it's quite insidious 
the the effects of food sometimes right it might take years or decades for us to for our health to deteriorate deteriorate due to the diet that we're on but it has become it is becoming so clear i don't think there's even a question as to you know um how food affects our health you know we can clearly see that you know even though there are many types of diets and and everyone is different we do know that the the one diet that is stressing all of us out that our bodies are suffering um you know uh, under this diet is the the western the westernized diet the junk food fast food processed food we know that is not optimum for our bodies so before we you know get into all of that let's just back up a bit and think about you know how did food become what it is today right things used to be simple right you know out in nature you get food you eat it and it's good for you it's good for your body right um we've learned which foods are poisonous we stay away from those and the other foods that you know are in our environment uh edibles you know we we eat them and you know end of story right we you know when did it get so complicated for us well you know the day when we thought that us you know as the humankind could do better in providing our bodies um than than what nature created for us i think that's the day when our health started to suffer right so you know even when we even at the start of civilization um and we started to to get into agriculture we started to farm our own foods and you know even like say 100 years ago things were not like we didn't have the packaged foods we didn't have the junk foods things were grown from the ground and we're eating wholesome foods right but even just the the act of um agriculture is already something that's not natural right um and and it just progressively got further our food progressively got further and further away from what would have been available to us in nature and that is part of the reason why that we are not able to process digest and deal with the foods that we're eating or a lot of the foods that we're eating today because it's gotten so far away from what um is natural for us and our bodies have been adapted to process digest and use the foods that you know um resemble more you know before all of the, uh, the civilization industrialization and all of that before our food before we changed our food right our bodies are still adapted to eating the foods you know <clears throat> um hundreds of years ago rather than the food that we eat now so that's one you know big problem right and so you know even there's just so much to talk about i'm just my my mind is jumping everywhere so i've got my notes in front of me and see let's see if i can stay focused here but yeah cuz this is such a big topic right so so we touched on just now digestion and processing of the foods so you know one thing that we maybe don't pay enough attention to is really our digestion right so we focus on the kinds of foods that we eat whether this is healthy or not i think that's really important okay but if we're if our digestion is not working we won't we won't be able to process what's coming in right and so and we will talk more about digestion actually next week so i won't i don't want to get into too much um details here but <clears throat> the food that we eat could affect our digestion but our digestion also affects how well we you know uh process the foods that are coming in and so even if you're eating the most healthful wholesome natural foods but if your digestion is not working you're not going to be able to make use of the food that's coming in so what affects digestion well 
you know, our lifestyle, right? Our stress levels. And, you, you know, and of course the food that we eat. So there, there's a lot that impacts our digestion. And so it's not just about choosing the food that, you know, that we think is, is healthy and then eating it and then we'll be fine. There's um, the timing of when you eat, how you eat, how you prepare your food, the state of your health in this moment, you know, what, what environment that you're in, all of these things are going to impact how well you're able to process the food, get the nutrients that you need out of it, um, and get rid of what's not useful for your body. And so <clears throat> food is important, but it's not, it's not just about food. There are so many different aspects that also come into play that's going to affect the, um, you know, how, how the food interacts with us once we ingest it. So, but let's just make things a little bit simpler today and just assume that our digestion um, is working well. We're generally healthy. You know, um, we're living, you know, stress-free lives. <laughs> so in that scenario, then let's just focus on the food and how it can impact our health and how or how it might cause stress in our bodies. So first, firstly, and, and most obviously, you know, junk food, packaged food, fast foods, I think we can all agree that these are, you know, um, these are problem problematic foods, you know. Um, but why? Like, why? Why is it that we? Why? Why is it that these foods are not good for us? And how? How are these junk food or packaged foods different from, say, whole natural foods? Well, first of all, the nutrient content is going to be very different, right? So, packaged foods are pretty much a dead food. <clears throat> Um, and one of the reasons why packaged foods can be, ha, ha, they have such a long shelf life is because a lot of the nutrients are taken out. So you might notice that, uh, one observation that you, you, you might notice, or you might've noticed, or maybe you <laughs> have a look at it now that, that I'm bringing this up. Foods that are most nutritious or that have the highest nutrient content are the ones that spoil most quickly. So think seafood, right? Um, versus uh, something else, maybe a, a, a lettuce leaf or something. <laughs> so, um, and this is because, you know, the, the, the microbes that are around are also, you know, they're, they're smart too. They wanna choose what's going to be good for them, right? And, and so they do go for foods that have the highest nutrient content. And so, you know, when we're looking at packaged foods, a lot of the nutrients are taken out. You know, one of the reasons is to preserve shelf life. They don't spoil as quickly. And then of course you have other things such as, you know, pesticides, chemicals, flavorings, preservatives, and all of that that's added into the processed foods. Because one thing is when you take away, you know, all these nutrients and, um, what's natural in the food when you're extracting this out it's going to be you know pretty tasteless it probably doesn't look very good it probably doesn't look like food <laughs> right so they have to add in um, various things to make them look appetizing and for them to taste good and then you know again more preservatives to extend shelf life um and then, of course, if you're eating foods that are grown conventionally, you're dealing with um, pesticides, fertilizers, and all of these things, um, these artificial um, chemicals, flavorings, pres preservatives, pesticides, and so on have been shown to cause all sorts of, sort of uh, harmful reactions in our bodies. And so when we are eating these foods on a constant basis or regular basis what we're doing is we're con con uh, constantly bombarding ourselves with these um, chemicals so our bodies are like under attack right <laughs> every meal that you eat where it contains these kinds of chemicals the body has to deal with it 
right? And so now you're already dealing with less nutrients coming in. And then the body has to deal with all of these kind of unnatural substances, most of them harmful. Um, and what you may not know is that it takes nutrients to digest your food. You need nutrients for every biological process that's occurring in your body. So now you're bringing in less nutrients and you're actually using up your, your store of nutrients that's in the body in order to process these foods, to digest them, and then to remove all of these unnatural chemicals and, and neutralize these toxins and all of this. It's a lot of work for the body. And your body is, you know, I think our bodies are so amazing and they're so, you know, so resilient and so adaptable. But having said this, you can see, you know, when we put our bodies through this kind of, uh, of attack, if you like, or stress through, you know, years or decades. And, and again, here we're just talking about food. We're also experiencing other stresses in our lives that we're not talking about that our bodies also need to direct their resources to. And so you can see how, you know, this could add up and it, you know, it only makes sense that your body can only do so much until, you know, or, or, or to be in this state for so long until things start to break down, start to not function well. And so, you know, um, I mean, there are so many different things I can talk about here, just about food, Ex you know, even about how foods um, are, are grown conventionally versus when they're grown organically versus if they're grown um, even more environmentally in a more environmentally friendly way, such as carbon far farming and so forth. And it's really, you know, if you look at it, everything points us back towards nature. Whatever nature had created, had intended for us, you know, that was what is going to make us healthy. That was perfect. We have evolved with those kinds of conditions and foods for millions of years, right? So that's what is going to be helpful for us. And now when we're looking back at how can we choose foods that are healthier for us, the simplest way or the simplest explanation is really about how can we get back to the most natural form of this food as we can. Because in the end, that's, you know, um, that's what it is. The further away you go uh, from nature, the less able your body is able to, to process this food and the less healthful it is for you and the more harmful it is for your body. There's still so much that we don't know and things that we thought were safe um, in at one time, we're starting to see that actually, no, um, we weren't aware of, you know, X, Y, and Z um, chemicals or things that actually re interact with our bodies. Or we weren't aware that certain vitamins that were taken out of the processed foods were actually so crucial, right? Um, so we're starting to find out more and more as we go. And I think the more research that is done, the more it points back to, hey, nature knew uh, what was best for us. And, and in fact, it's about coming back closer to what's natural. And so, you know, um, so, so, you know, we talked about junk food, how that's so obviously harmful to our bodies, but even conventionally grown crops, which are, you know, giving us, if you like, wholesome foods, they're also actually very far from what's natural um, and what our bodies are used to eating. And, you know, and that's a whole other topic we can get into. Um, you know, not, not to mention the environmental uh, impacts that conventional farming has. Um, how, how it actually contributes to pollution, to uh, land degradation, how it actually decreases the nutrient content of our food compared to say organically grown crops. And of course there's pesticides being used that's been linked to, um, you know, cancers and, and causes, um, you know, uh, or have, they have been linked to endocrine um, dysfunction. Um, so your hormones are, uh, the, the hormonal system um, is affected and affects the immune system. I mean, there are so many things that we can get into. 
Um, and also, one thing you might have noticed is the, the kinds of foods that we eat or the diversity of foods that we eat have drastically been reduced. I think most of us are eating something like a handful of um, main foods, right? Like you, you have your wheat and your soy and, and um, uh, corn and <clears throat> a couple of others. It's just a handful of crops that, that that's the basis of the bulk of our diet. And that in itself, that's something. there's something wrong with that. You know, our bodies are made to eat a very diversified diet. We get new, different nutrients from different types of foods. The nutrient contents, you know, even within the same food that are, you know, slightly di like different species or the same type of foods, but they're different species, we still get different nutrient contents from, you know, these various species. Um, and so it is, you know, it is important for us to eat a variety of foods so that we get or give our bodies um, all the nutrients um, and good stuff that's needed. And also, you know, even though, even if we talk about wholesome foods, there are nutrients that are good for us. And then there are likely um, going to be some substances in that food that are maybe anti-nutrients. They're not so good for us. And you're going to find a balance of these in probably, you know, almost every food that you eat. You know, there are some there. And also this, whether something's beneficial to you or whether something is harmful to you also, again, depends on the state of your health and what you can process um, and digest in your body. But, you know, there are pro like that there, there's going to, you're never going to just find a food that's only has nutrients and, and doesn't have anything that's sort of harmful. I think even in your wholesome natural foods, there are some natural, uh, compounds or chemicals that are found in the foods that when eaten in ex uh, excess, it's, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be so great for our bodies. And so when we eat a wide, uh, varied diet, we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get, you know, all the different kind of nutrients that our bodies need, but we're also not eating, say, one type of, you know, the anti-nutrients, right? We're getting all different types and, you know, everything is at a lower level and it's probably at a better level that allows our bodies to have that capacity to process them rather than if you overload your body with one type of, um, substance, you know, um, you know, over time, this could create problems if we're not efficiently, you know, processing everything we need to. And then, you know, last point that I want to talk about here is that, you know, one of the things that we uh, have the luxury of doing nowadays is to eat foods that are not in season foods that are grown you know across the globe we can have tropical fruits in in winter and you know all sorts of exotic fruits that aren't even found in our you know natural or local environment and so there are a couple of issues when it comes to that too um which i won't get into because i'm noticing the time i'm already past the 20 <laughs> 23 minute mark so I'll keep it short but there is uh, there's definitely uh, a reason why our bodies do better when we are eating foods that are locally in our environment and also within season because food is not just calories it's not just nutrients but food is also information the food is telling us it's a way to communicate to us um, the environment that we're in so when we're eating foods from a different country, when we're eating foods that's out of season, what we're doing is we're actually sending mixed messages to our body. So even though everything else, you know, our senses are telling us that we're, you know, maybe in winter in a, in a certain location, the food that's coming in is giving them the opposite, perhaps the opposite information say, hey, no, actually it's hot here, it's, it's tropical and da da da. And, and so, you know, when you have the, these kinds of, um, confusion when things are not in synchrony, you know, uh, the information that you're getting from various um, places are not pointing towards the same thing. This could 
you know, potentially create problems, right, um, in your body and, um, and also um, about how, um, how some of the, the processes um, are, are happening in your body is, is also going to be affected. So I'm going to end it here because it's, it's becoming a really long um, session now. Um, I don't see any comments popping up right now, so I will end. Um, I will end this training here. If you do have any questions, do reach out, comment below, um, and and yeah. So like I said, this is a big topic, and there's so much more we can get into. Let me know what you're interested in and what you want to um, hear more about. Um, next week, I'll be talking about digestion, which is another huge issue when it comes to stress. Um, and, you know, digestion is can, can be a, one kind of stress, and stress definitely affects digestion. So that's what we're going to be talking about next week. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead. Have a, oh, it's going to be Easter weekend. So have a wonderful weekend with, uh, with your friends, your family, or even just by yourself. Enjoy it. Take some time off. And I will see you guys back next week. <laughs> Have a good one.